Let's pretend we've got some probability density function and its function is given by a half of x a minus one. And we can see that when that's graphed, it'll give us a triangle and the area under the triangle should equal one. Relating this to what this video is about, we're looking at cumulative density functions or cumulative distribution functions where the y values on those functions are representative of the area under the probability density function. You could ask, how do you establish this relationship? And my answer would be that we would utilize the fundamental theorem of calculus. You would find the cumulative distribution function by taking the integral where the lower bound would be two, or that's the start of your PDF, and the upper bound is x. And the reason you do this is because you substitute by using the fundamental theorem of calculus and having x as your upper bound supplies a function for your final result. And if you just watch the animation play out for a moment, you will soon recognize that the y values on the cumulative density function are representative of the area under the probability density function. Let's solve this problem. So we've got the probability density function or the PDF is given below. We are asked to find what is the cumulative distribution function, which is just the integral from the lower bound up to x. And then using that cumulative distribution function, we're gonna find some probabilities. So first of all, let's just do part A. Okay, so we're just evaluating the integral from zero all the way up to x. And the zero is not coming from because it's a nice number. The zero is coming from the lower bound of our function. And instead of going up to five, we're gonna go up to the point x because we wanna substitute this into the bound here. We're gonna substitute it into the bound and we want to get a function, not a number. Because if we put five in there, we would you know, evaluate this and we'd get a number, subtract a number. But if we put an x in here, what we're going to get is we're gonna get a function subtract a number. Now in this case, the number is zero, but it's not always gonna be the fact that that's true. So we get our cumulative density function is a linear function, it's just x on five, and that's between zero and five. Okay, and it's probably worth, it's probably worth writing this as a piecewise function. Okay. okay, now I'll just do a little sketch to illustrate. All right, and so I've just got an illustration of the cumulative distribution function, which is the one that we've found. That's this one here. That is the first one. That's this guy here. And the second one is the PDF, which comes from the question. So that's, that's the PDF here. Okay, and so really what we're illustrating when we evaluate the integral from zero to x, what we're saying the y values, the y values on the cumulative distribution function, these guys here, these y values, are gonna be equivalent to whatever the area is under the probability density function at any x value. But for the second part of this question, it says find the probability for x being uh, uh, less than or equal to three. Okay, now we're gonna use our cumulative distribution function to decide that. And what I would say here is that is actually just gonna be when we evaluate three into the function. Now the reason why, and it's actually just important to just step back and interpret this. When we were looking at PDFs, we would say, well, we'd find the point here three and we'd evaluate this whole area there. We'd evaluate that whole area there. And so we'd say, well, you know, if we, we would say it's the integral from zero to three of the function. Okay, and we'd evaluate the integral and would be good. If we're using cumulative, cumulative density functions, what we would have is we're saying, well, we're gonna evaluate them when the point is a three there. So we're gonna dot that up and we're gonna read off that y value that comes out here. So we're just putting it in, we're reading off a y value and whatever this y value is, it's gonna be 0 0.6, okay? But this y value is gonna be equivalent to this area under there. Okay, so I'd say that the probability that x is less than or equal to three using the cumulative distribution of function would be 0 0.6. Now again, like you could use the probability density function if you want, but uh, it's just nice to know that you can do this the both ways. So we could just do this really quickly to verify using our PDF. 
All right, so you can see either way, both ways, the cumulative distribution function or the probability density function, you are you're going to get uh, the same result, which is very nice. Another example. Okay, now here we're given that the continuous random variable has a cumulative distribution function. So this is now this is now a CDF, not a PDF. This is a CDF. Okay, so we've got to interpret it a little bit differently. Okay, so it's saying determine the value of the constant uh, k, and hence, or no, not hence, but just calculate a probability. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sketch what this function is going to look like. The y values, these y values, are equal to the area under PDF. Okay, so that's, it's just important to have that relationship in your mind. So I'm just going to sketch this real quick to help us find the value of k. Great, so I've got my sketch here and I want to determine the value of k. So it's got this parabolic relationship and I want to know the value of k. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, well, I'm going to use the fact that I actually know a coordinate uh, which is when x is 6, y is 1. Okay, so we've got the value of k there. It is 1 over... We've got the value of k there. It's 1 over 36. Now we're just going to calculate this probability, which is a half to 1. Now we've just got to do a bit of interpreting on our PDF here. Okay. What this is really illustrating, and I'll, I'll actually I'll zoom in here so I can see pretty much the lot here. Okay, what this is illustrating is that we want to be between one, so this point here, and a half, which is like this point here. So these y values are going to be tight. I'm going to have to zoom right in here. Okay, but really, I want to know the probability that we are in this sort of range here, in this sort of range there. Okay, this is the this range just from there to there all right just from there to there and so that's going to be quite a small probability now if we were doing this using a, a you know probability density function we're a little bit more familiar with this we would okay let's say if that was our function there and we we're going from a half up to one we would just calculate the area between two bounds and we know how to do that using the cumulative distribution function it's actually quite similar we're just going to take the difference between our two bounds okay so i'd actually say it's equal to f of one subtract f of a half okay and the reason being is because f of one this is going to give me this section here that's going to be f of one and then this part here is going to be f of a half. So let's say if this is like 5 and that's 3, that's not going to be the case. Actually, just say that's 0 0.5, that's 0 0.3. I know that the probability is going to be 0 0.2 because it's going to be the difference between those two. This little section in here is going to be the difference. Okay, but it's not going to be 0 0.5 or 0 0.3. We're going to find out exactly what their probabilities are by just evaluating them. So you substitute them in to your probability, uh, to, into your cumulative distribution function and uh, solve it. Okay, with a bit of simplifying there, you would get that your probability is going to be 1 over, uh, 1, uh, or 1 over 48, which is about 0 0.02, roughly.